three weeks later. Hey everybody, welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. Behind me, my 2018 Case CX80 Excavator. If you've not seen the previous video on this machine, it was kind of a little introduction video, a little comparison to the Komatsu machine that it's replacing. And as mentioned in that video, this machine is a major upgrade for me. It is definitely a lot nicer and uh, superior to the Komatsu in my opinion. All that being said, there is definitely room for improvement on this machine. So hopefully we're gonna be taking care of all that in today's video. Now, if you haven't watched that previous video, the link is down in the description and you should definitely check that one out as well. So as I know, you guys are very astute observers and loyal listeners. You'll remember my major complaint with this machine in the last video was that crappy coupling down there that makes the bucket kind of a quick pin and the lack of an appendage up here, the thumb. Um, of course, not all machines come with thumbs. There are various arguments to be made for and against having a thumb on there, but for my line of work and the stuff I do with this machine, a thumb is just uh, a, a must have. The Komatsu machine that this is replacing did not have a thumb on it when I purchased it as well. So I went ahead and bought a work brow thumb for that machine and it has served me very well. And I have done probably a lot of things that I shouldn't have done with that thumb and it is still held up very well and never had any kind of issues with it whatsoever. Being that I was so happy with the work brow thumb that I had before, I went ahead and went that route again. Uh, it's also nice that they are a semi-local company. They're made over in Ohio and uh, they use American steel and all that good jazz. So it's not like we're buying some cheap piece of crap off of eBay, which kind of seems like that coupler was. And actually, talking to the guys at Workbrow, I believe they made this bucket as well. They make the uh, Case New Holland buckets. I believe they made this bucket as well, though it does not say Workbrow on it anywhere. I'm pretty sure that they private brand for Case machines. I know they make their dozer blades and uh, a lot of their other buckets, but I'm like 99% sure that's actually a Workbrow built bucket. So not only did we have to pick up a thumb, we had to pick up a hydraulic coupler as well. Uh, it's not for the fact that I'm too lazy to get out of the cab. Uh, it was mainly for the fact that that one is just so sloppy. The big thing I like about having a coupler like this is that you can actually flip the bucket 180 degrees and dig backwards so you could scoop into a pile like pushing forwards, kind of like my uh, 22B shovel almost. Another good reason to get that style of coupler was I have some other buckets that aren't quite 100% identical to the new bucket that we also have over there, as you guys will see in a bit. So that coupler should accept those other buckets and it will engage them and be able to dig with those as well. This bucket, while it's a great bucket, however, it is not built with the same design pin, 
coupling either. Um, unfortunately, this is a backhoe style pin connection on this bucket and not even it will work with this hydraulic coupler. But have no fear, we can make that work. I don't know that that's gonna be a today project, but we can definitely uh, fix that bucket up to work with this new hydraulic coupler. So the thumb I had on the previous machine was just a standard main pin hydraulic thumb. It just pivoted right off of that main pin and one ram would shove it down and lift it up. This thumb is an upgrade though. Since we have such a nice machine here to work with, I figured we'd get a equally nice hydraulic thumb and this is what's called a progressive link thumb. And basically it boils down to it has a lot more travel than the style that I had on the previous machine. It's gonna be a little bit before you guys get to see that unfold and really understand how that works and how it's different if you don't already know. We gotta start with a coupler. Well, they're moving easier than I had feared. Oh, the boom's free. Nailed it. Good riddance, crappy coupler. I'm excited, it's like industrial grade Christmas. All right, so actually we only are gonna use, what is it, this pin. This one's gonna come out and be replaced by the main pin on the thumb. Well, I actually impressed myself with how close I got this thing to lined up. It's only off up and down, and I did that on purpose. I actually raised the stick of the machine up there at the very end because in this scenario, of course, it's easier to lift the coupler up a little bit. You can't pull the stick down, so I figured if higher would be better to save me jumping in and out of the machine 20 times. So I'm pretty happy with that. The next challenge we're going to face is figuring out our shim pack. So you want to try to keep as much of that side to side slop out of the coupling as possible. This machine is low hour, but it's not new. So there is a chance that we have some wear on this stick already. And not to mention it could be out of square slightly. It's unlikely, but you know, one side like the bottom of this bushing versus the top might be wore a little bit more. So to get as accurate a measurement as possible, I'm gonna slide a pin through that thing, and then we'll slide the coupler all the way over to one side, measure the gap that we have, and then we'll split that and put shims in there to compensate. You may be asking yourself why I'm bothering to slide the pin through, and the answer is because it's a lot easier to keep everything square when there's a, a pin holding it square. Right, I'm just going to use a pry bar here. We're going to keep this coupler pulled tight all the way over to one side. I've grabbed the shims off of the main pin they provided to us with the thumb. And we're just going to find out what combination of shims we need to fit down in there and keep that tight. That's pretty good right there. Unfortunately, it's an uneven shim pack. We can't evenly space it. With our shims figured out, we can go ahead and pull this pin back out. We now need to figure out how much gap we have between the coupler 
ears and the thumb ears because that one pin is going to go through there and we don't want to fiddle with pulling that pin in and out 10 times because it's going to be quite a pain to line everything up. So we get a measurement here. looks like we're at 12 and a quarter for the complete outside to outside width of the coupler. Looks like we are at 14 and an eighth on the thumb. So 14 and an eighth minus 12 and a quarter. Uh, add the one, carry the five. Earth rotates counterclockwise. Uh, if my math's right, we should be inch and seven eighths difference here. So we gotta divide inch and seven eighths by two and we'll split that shim pack as best we can. All right, I almost screwed that up. I forgot we have one side sticks out further than the other on the coupler and they have to do that because they have to have this raised boss for the locking bolt to go through the pin. So now I think it is we need what five eighths of a shim on this side because this sticks out inch and a quarter further than this side sticks out. So I'm just trying to keep the thumb perfectly centered to the stick. That is not a fun time trying to get everything lined up all correctly by yourself. All right, the pin is in. And when my dad watches this, he will not be shocked to hear that I miscalculated something there and ended up having to rearrange the shim pack a little bit. But it wasn't too bad because once you have the pin in there, you can just slide it back a little bit, drop one shim, slide it back the other way, add it on the other side. So. We've got our spacing even now. When you measure off of the stick, it is, the thumb is dead centered from the stick. It's just kind of an optical illusion because you have this uh, bushing over here is kind of proud and there's not one over here to match. So looks a little goofy, but it is four and a quarter on the dot on both sides. So the thumb is good. What we have to do now is get this hole lined up on our pin Yeah, that should be good. We'll stick a retainer bolt down through there, and that way the pin does not rotate in the coupler. You want that to rotate in the stick because that's where your bushings are. If the coupler was rotating on the pin, there's no bushings in there, and you'll just wear out your coupler really quick. And then we'll be back to a scrap coupler, and we don't want that. Beautiful. And we'll take what's left of our shim pack and put it over here since we have space between the C-clip and the uh, back side of that thumb. Pretty tight on the snap ring on this side. There we go. Well, with the thumb all pinned on there proper like, we can finally start getting into the nitty gritty of this deal. We've got to install our hydraulic lines that run from the coupler cylinder. And I wanted to get that done before we pinned this on because it seemed like it would just make life easier for access in there on the back side of that coupler. All right, with those lines in, now we can pin our dog bone into the coupler. That should be the last pin connection we need to make until we have to put the thumb cylinder on.
Well, I stretched the boom out like that so that we can start figuring out how we got to route all of our hoses. So the kit comes with all of these nice new hydraulic hoses and there is a bunch of weld on hose mounts that we have to lay out on the boom. Uh, but I guess before we get ahead of ourselves running them out the boom and everything, we should probably figure out where they go. Um, so we got to start opening some compartments here and figure out what connects in here. Luckily enough for us, Work Brow includes some really nice instructions here for this coupler. It's not a very complicated process, but there's just a good bit going on here with different hose routings and valve blocks you have to weld onto the stick and everything else. So right now we are on this step right here and basically we need to weld that guy onto the stick. Well, there's no sense in lying about it to you guys. I've never installed one of these couplers before, and I'm just following the directions. Basically what it says to do at this point is curl the bucket in as far as you can, and then figure out where you're gonna mount this valve block because you don't want it to pull too tight on the hoses. But you also don't want it slid back here so far that you got a bunch of excess that's gonna get caught up in stuff. So that's pretty much like really stretching it there. So we'll come back probably about right there, put a little mark, And now we can prep out this thing for welding. So the way this works is this little valve block just has a bolt-on tab on the back of it and you weld that tab onto the stick and then we'll be able to bolt the valve to the tab. Pretty square for being eyeballed. Alright kids, you're going to want to make sure you have your battery disconnected. I just shut off the master switch here in this case. But these newer machines, no telling what kind of stuff you could fry with the computer if you're not careful. Just giving her a good tack for right now until we make sure everything's copacetic with the lines. Well, I don't think our paint matched quite right. No. Some of that is because the sun faded off the original paint. I'm not so worried what it looks like, I just kind of wanted to make sure it's not going to rust. Start leaving rust streaks going down the boom and everything else. This machine, so far, has spent a good bit of its life with me under roof. But that's not always going to be the case. So they provided all these hoses that run out the boom and everything with this kit and the way they did it I like. They branched off the hoses into smaller sections so you have a section that runs from that block we installed up here to the boom connection and then I believe there's another one going to be down there at the base of the boom where it runs into the house. And the reason I like that is because hydraulic lines are expensive the longer they are. So if you blow a line you don't want to have to replace one that runs clear from the beginning of the stick all the way into the valve bank under the hood, you'd much rather replace 
a four to six foot one or a 10 foot one that runs just on one piece of the boom. So I like the way they did this. All right, well, the simplest part of the installation is done now. So we've got our lines routed all the way up and down the boom here. And we're getting to the point where we have to tap into the existing system for hydraulic pressures. So this line right here, what curls the bucket in, we're gonna have to install a T there. And then there's another line that pulls off of that. And then all these lines will run down into a valve block that we have to mount down inside there. So I've pulled these covers off for easier access and let some light in there. Um, but basically we have a valve block that we have to mount in here. All those lines are going to run to. Only trouble with doing that is whenever I crack this line loose here, this entire hard line up to where it crests over the boom is going to want to drain down. I don't think there's really any way of avoiding that. All right, so there's pretty much no way to do this without making at least a little teeny bit of mess here. So I've got some pig mats. Hopefully we're going to catch all this oil and uh, not get it all over the floor. Got our T-fitting ready to go here. I'm going to stick it on there as quick as possible. Try to minimize how much fluid we're losing. Not too bad. I'm impressed with myself on that. Got the old switcheroonie done and only really even hit one pig mat. I'm calling that a pretty smooth transition. I can't complain about that. All right, we're getting into the uh, heart of the operation here now. This is the solenoid controlled valve block. Basically, when you flip the switch inside the cab there, this solenoid will allow you to redirect hydraulic fluid from the curl function out to that coupler and actuate it. And I'll give these guys a lot of credit. This kit is very well documented. All the pieces parts are right there. This is all bolt in. You don't have to sit there and scratch your head and make brackets and figure out where to mount this stuff. There's already factory brackets in there that this plate is going to bolt to. All we have to do is bolt this valve block to the plate, bolt the plate in place, and we're going to be off to the races. So installing this valve block is not that hard to get in there and work on. I mean, it's pretty, pretty accessible, but it is kind of difficult to get a camera angle on. So I uh, hope you guys appreciate whatever you can see here. Give me back my wrench. Oh no, my socket has fallen off into the bowels of the machine. Ow. Just that simple, valve block is mounted. Let's uh, run some hydraulic lines. Now we need to install this T-fitting here into this line connection up here. This is the return circuit running back to the hydraulic tank. I can hear air getting into the hydraulic tank now, so all the oil must be running back there, I think. Yep, 
didn't spill a drop. All right, we've made our connections up here on the boom. Now we have to route all this hose here through its respective places and to their homes. I must say, it's usually not my style, but working on clean, newer equipment, pretty nice every once in a while. All right, looks like the last connection we need to make is off the high pressure pump, which is behind this panel right here. Never had this one open. Interesting. Look how nice these directions are laid out and everything for you. I've seen some of these crappy kits where you're completely in the dark and just up to you to figure it out on your own. But man, you got the exact picture of what we're looking at there. And uh, we just need to take off that hose right there, put a T-fitting in there, and run one last hose up to that valve block we installed. I did do a pressure bleed down so hopefully there's no pressure left on the system and there must be a little bit because we got oil coming out here doesn't take much any little bit of weight hanging on a cylinder or something will create some pressure for us not much we can do about it I mean like I said I did the bleed down already so we're probably just gonna have to gear up with some more pig mats and deal with what we got to deal with we'll just be quick about it like we were up on the boom Of course, this thing's gonna fight me now that it's leaking everywhere. It's not wanting to give me enough room to make this connection. <sighs> come on, baby, come on. Didn't think this one through. That's getting a plug, I gotta get more plugs. All right, it's not actually under any pressure, so I'm just sticking these rubber stopper plugs in here for now to try to hold the oil in. And then I'm going to have to loosen up the clamp on the line down there so it can slide down some and allow us to put the T in line. What a mess. Not much you can do about it in these circumstances though. Part of the process. Not a lot of room back here to work. I'm having a struggle getting a wrench in here <clears throat> to get on the line clamp that'll let it slide down for us. Hey. I think we got her now. Releasing the oil. All right, we got that good and tight. That's our high pressure side, so it should be good and tight. We can retighten that hose clamp now and then put our new line off of our T up to the valve block. Yep. Well, sweet. With all those lines connected and tightened, 
I believe that wraps up the hydraulic portion of the coupler installation. Pretty excited about that. That's going to be sweet. Something I didn't show on camera, I screwed up earlier as I put a T in this line and not this line. And I did not do a good job of following these lines out the boom to see where they went. Um, I mistakenly thought this was our curl line and it is actually this one. This is an auxiliary line and that was causing me some confusion with T fittings, but I figured out my mistake, switched it around and we are completely good to go. With the hydraulic portion of things tended to, that leaves the part that I am dreading the most, electrical. Now, many of you know that I am not a big fan of electrical, but it seems like it's a pretty much a plug and play kit here. I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of uh, guesswork or figuring. It seems like everything's pretty well laid out for us. Got this really nice controller that's gonna go in the cab to run the coupler with a nice harness and everything. And it's just got Deutz connectors on the end of it, so they should just plug right into the harness. Should be good to go. According to the directions, first thing we need to do is find a suitable location for our little box here. And I think I'm gonna stick her right on there like so. It's not so far back here that you have to turn all the way around in your seat, um, but it's up here enough where it's out of your way. And I should be able to notch this panel just enough to let this wire loom run down behind the panel and have it all tucked in out of sight and not have a wire strewn mess slung out all over the cab. So that's my plan anyway. Here's the part where I turn into a bull in a china shop here. We gotta delicately remove all this plastic. I just found a lovely pair of safety glasses buried in behind the seat. I don't think you're gonna see much out of them anymore. It's always amazing what kind of little stuff falls down in behind these seats never to be seen again. You gotta really go fishing if you wanna find it. Trying to give ourselves a little bit of room to work in here. Just easier to pull the seat out, get it out of the way. Yeah, we got all this room for activities. Ah, now we can really get at the problem here. All right, I put a notch in this plastic piece as just a relief for the uh, wire loom coming out of the box. We should be able to reinstall this now. And it would be easier if the control box is already stuck to the window. I know I have double-sided tape somewhere in this building, yet I cannot find it. Amazon will deliver more tomorrow, but that is not helping me today. Whether it's an excavator or a car or side-by-side, -side, whatever it is, Plastic is such a pain to work with. It takes an amount of force to move it and manipulate it how you want. But you gotta have just the right amount of force because just an ounce too much and you're gonna break stuff. At least I got that part buttoned up. All I got to do now is get my double-sided tape for the box. Yeah, I think that looks pretty legit there. Nice and well-routed. The hard part now is figuring out how to route 
the bulk of this wire needs to go out of the cab and the other short leg of it here needs to get tied into the auxiliary power here at the fuse box. Finally got this wire pulled down through here. Took quite a while just to find a place to snake it out there. All right, that sucked. I figured this was gonna be the hardest part. It's taken me about an hour and 10 minutes just to get this fish tape from the other side of the machine routed above and around everything that I wanted so that now I can just tie this wire loom to the end of it and pull it back through. And hopefully it doesn't get hung up on anything. <laughs> Whew. That was a lot of work for that. Click. Beautiful. Glad that's done. Back in the cab here, I found our optional power down here. So we got a ground, we got a hot. So we need to connect those up. Black is ground, white is red. Our pins installed. That. That should be it. We should have power up to our little box there now. Let's check it out. I heard this box make some noise. There we go. All right, we should be ready to fire the machine up and give this thing a test if my calculations are correct. Alright, I'm going to activate the coupler and then I'll have to run the curl cylinder and then we should see that yellow bit on the coupler there retract. Hey, hey, hey it works! Sweet! Right now we're getting all the air out of the cylinder, that's why it's kind of jumping around like that. After we um, cycle it a few times, it shouldn't do that anymore, it should be nice and smooth. There we go. So the coupler is complete. That was it. Now I just have to put this cab back together and then find my double sided tape and it'll stick up that nice little box right there. That's going to be great. I am stoked. So there we go. I got all the panels buttoned up back on the machine. The cab's all put back together. She is ready to go work minus this thumb. We need to get this thumb welded on and plumbed in. That might seem like it's a bit of a bigger process. It, it, in my mind, seems like it's the lion's share of the work, but it's really not. The coupler was much more involved. All we really need to do for this thumb is weld on this bracket, and then we will take that hydraulic cylinder, mount it onto the thumb to locate the upper bracket, buzz it on there, and then uh, hook up some hydraulic lines, and we're ready to go rip and tear something. So with the thumb leaned all the way back against the stick as it is, 
that locates the mounting bracket vertically, you know, up and down on the stick. So I just need to center it side to side. We'll put a couple heavy tacks on it on all four corners and uh, yeah, make sure everything's good. Looking for heavy 9 sixteenths. Uh huh. Alright, I'm just going to put one good heavy tack down here somewhere and then we will make sure the top is square. Trouble is if you try to knock around this side and then try to square the top, this side gets out of whack. So we're going to tack this side before we even try to get the top. I realize this is all very dirty. I got to clean this all up yet before I finish weld it. I'm just trying to get this thing tacked into place and then we'll go around and clean all the prep areas up real nice. All right, I tacked it in another place on the bottom, so we should have our side to side locked together, but the problem we're having now is the stick is probably not perfectly true, and also this base plate probably got slight warp to it um, due to the fact that they welded all this other stuff onto this plate, so things tend to curl up just ever so slightly. With the bottom tacked in good, we can find a way now to try to draw this down and close that gap up. It's hard to clamp to because your surfaces here are not parallel to each other since this stick is tapered, but we can try. Alright, this side is drawn down all the way. I'm going to clean up a little spot up here and put a nice tack. That's the only clamp I have that's this big, so I'm going to have to do each side independently, unfortunately. Alright, it's all completely tacked up there. We should be able to just go around now, clean up all the seam where we're going to be welding at. And there is some debate, I guess, in industry about how you're supposed to weld these things on. I've actually talked to the people at Workbrow about it. Um, some people will say you don't weld the top sides, only weld the sides. Some people want to weld the whole thing out. My thing is trapping moisture behind it, so I'm going to weld the complete top side in hopes that no moisture gets down behind it. I'm also going to leave about a half inch, like right at the tip here, I'm not going to weld on the bottom side. And that way if any moisture does get in behind that bracket, it has a way to drain out. Um, this machine is going to spend a lot of time outside, as most machines do, so rainwater building up in there, especially with freeze-thaw or something, is something you want to avoid. Going to do a little bit of preheat just to take the chill out of the metal. Helps get a little bit more consistent welding.
So to come up with the location for our upper cylinder mount here, uh, we have everything collapsed. This is in the completely closed position, so this is as open as you want it to be. Um, but the thing is, you don't want the cylinder to really bottom out every time you open the thumb up all the way. So in this, in the, this is in the complete collapsed position. I've marked the location of the upper mount here, and basically we're just going to give it about a quarter. Basically, we're just going to hold it up about an eighth to a quarter of an inch, and that way the cylinder can't actually bottom out in the barrel here every time you open the thumb. You guys can start to see how this whole setup's going to work here. Get a bungee, hold this up out of the way, and then we can clean off all the surface, get ready to weld it. I think I got it right where we want it, so go ahead and give her a tack. Well, I think I'm going to call that a wrap on the welding there. It's not, uh, it's not a Van Gogh, but I can live with it. I'm definitely a better stick welder than I am a MIG welder, but uh, I know it's not going to come off there. It's plenty strong. Yeah. I wouldn't hire out as a welder, that's for sure. I might not hire out as a full-time fabricator, but I can make metal stick together. I'm going to let that cool down for a little bit, go grab something to eat. When I come back, we're going to stick some hydraulic lines in this thing, and I think we're going to be just about ready to go. All right, well, I was out to lunch. I picked up some double-sided tape so we can stick our control box for the coupler up here. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Look how nice and neat that looks. Sweet. All right. I tried to touch up the paint and make it look nice, uh, but I also tried to do it very quickly and consequently does not look nice. You can either have quick or you can have nice. You cannot have both. I'm not happy with that. I'm going to have to fix that, but uh, right now I'm too excited to go out and try to pick up some trees with this thing. It's not going to rust. The paint is going to protect it from rusting at least, so we can put this thing together and uh, have at it. Perfect. Nailed it. Okay, I believe all we have to do is connect hydraulic lines and this baby is ready to go munch some trees. All right, so the way that we are controlling our cylinder for the thumb is off of the auxiliary circuit but we don't want to hog the auxiliary circuit. We're going to take it from up here, we'll put a T in the line, and we'll run a hose right up here to this block. Take our T fitting. Now we can reconnect this. Now I'm just putting a fitting in the cylinder to convert from the ORB, O-ring boss fitting, 
that's in the cylinder over to a dash 12 JIC, which is what the other end of our T is as well. And we should be in business. Got that Guten tight spec. Well, that side's done. Just got to repeat the process on the other side. The port's a little bit different on this side of the cylinder, so I got a 90 degree ORB for over here. I had a debacle with getting these fittings here this morning. I drove all the way to the hydraulic shop, which isn't super far, but it's not super close either. And uh, came back here with what I thought was the right fittings because I just measured what was here. I didn't actually take the line apart and look. So these are basically they're inverted JIC. The flares are on opposite sides as they would be on JIC. They're BSP, I think they it's British something or other. It's kind of uncommon. I don't see a lot of that. The thread pitches and everything are the same, so the fittings will thread onto one another, but ultimately they are different. I'm of the belief that everything hydraulic should be JIC or O-ring face. I have yet to see any merit for any other system. Maybe I'm wrong. Let, let me know your thoughts in the comments. All right. We're ready for action. <laughs> I'm excited. Actually, we're not. We need to grease things first. There's one, two, three, four grease points, maybe five. Five grease points on the thumb, and then we replaced our stick pin, so we need to re-grease that as well. Never ever once in my life have I pulled the grease gun out of the case and just had a full tube. Always on E. Ready for action. <laughs> Sweet! What do you guys think of that? That is awesome! That is fantastic right there. I, I mean, I've seen these and I've actually run a couple progressive length thumbs before. So I don't know if I discussed heavy in the early part of the video here or not, but the standard thumb like I have on the Komatsu probably only comes out to about 90 degrees from where it's at, maybe a little more, maybe like 100, 110 degrees maybe. Maybe you get that much swing out of it. This one will come almost 180, maybe a little past 180. It's incredible how far around you can get that thumb. You do have reduced strength at those extreme ranges, but a lot of times you're not needing them in those extreme positions. You just need something. So. That is going to be super handy, and we've got some clearing work to do, so that's what the rush was to get this all put together. So the very last thing we got to do is, of course, put a bucket on. Like I said earlier, we can't use the old bucket anymore. we got to hitch up to the new one here.
there's a big part of me that wants to just smash this pallet off of here and break the bands that way. But it's a really nice pallet and I want to reuse it. We're ready to rock. how much you can curl that around. Part of the reason I got a different bucket for this too is that the tooth pattern on this bucket matches up with the tines on the thumb. The other bucket will not work with this thumb very well. The teeth are going to jam into the tines.
Do you see it? <laughs> this thing is sweet! Look at the angulation there. That is night and day compared to the thumb I had on the other machine. Might have been able to get out to about here with the other thumb. Maybe, if you're lucky. So as best I can tell, the thumb is working fantastic. That is just impressive to me. What an absolute unit. The old Diesel Creek logo on there looking pretty sharp too, huh? If you guys are perhaps interested in picking yourself up a thumb or a coupler or a bucket or whatever for yourself, I'll uh, leave a link down in the description to uh, the coupler and the thumb that I have there. This just adds to the list of the many different Workbrow products I have. All of them have been outstanding. I have not a single complaint out of any of them. So definitely top-notch stuff and made in Ohio. So I, uh, I like to support stuff that's built here or at least close to here. Anyway, the old case here is uh, pretty much ready for battle. And that's good because we have a bit of a battle coming up here. If you didn't notice all the pink dots on the trees, uh, well, unfortunately those trees days are very short numbered. Those gotta go. Uh, so we're gonna be clearing this area here real, real soon. It might be the next video you guys see. I'm not sure, it depends on the weather. Look forward to a nice clearing video here in the future. So if you like the new bucket thumb coupler combination on the case and uh, you like this video and you want to see more like them, make sure you hit that thumbs up button for me down below there. It really helps out the channel. It doesn't cost you guys a dime. If you're a big fan of the channel and you'd like to help support in a little more direct way, you can head on over to the store. That's dieselcreek.com. Link is always down in the description. We're currently printing up some of the stock that you guys were uh, emailing us saying that we were out of. All the stuff at the store is, if it's not back in stock now, it will be well, within days of this video releasing. So so if you guys want some sweet t-shirts getting ready for the spring and the summer here, head on over to the store. That's dieselcreek.com. Link is down in the description. But that's all I've got for now. I gotta go put some fuel in this thing, and I think I'm gonna start ripping and tearing down here. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.